Well, good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Parts of the western U.S. under a drought emergency as most of California's reservoirs are well below their historic averages. Here at home, we desperately need some rain as well. It's been warm and fairly dry. Morning clouds are kind of hanging in there yet again. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, May 11th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. Uh, another hot day yesterday, but some breeze in between. And it wasn't too bad at all. Yeah. I think during the heat of the day, my temperature in my truck was running about uh, low to mid 90s versus low hundreds right. from last so that's, weekend. That's better from the weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is better. We're, we're getting ourselves primed for the summer. That's yeah, the way are. I look at it. And we're running about 10 degrees above average when it comes to those afternoon highs. That doesn't really change today. Uh, we did get some rain yesterday out across uh, parts of Del Rio uh, down towards Eagle Pass. That's good news. I mean, these are areas that uh, have seen some drought. We did not get it here in San Antonio. And the radar this, this morning reveals that uh, we basically have got quiet conditions. And I think we'll probably see that throughout the rest of today. We're not expecting those storms again this afternoon out west. Temperature wise, it's not cooling down at all. 74 degrees at the airport, 72 Kerrville, 72 Rock Springs, 77 in Del Rio. I mean, we got to get a little more re relief than that in the morning, but it's just not happening. 72 Bernie State, 73 Comfort, 71 right now in New Braunfels. Here's our case on 12 hour forecast. Clouds stick around through the morning hours as they often do. And then by mid morning, we're seeing the sun pop out. Temperatures are up around 83, 11 o'clock, 86 noon time. And high temperatures today should be somewhere in the mid 90s where we were yesterday, 94, 5, uh, 4 o'clock, and then uh, we'll see those temperatures up into the upper 90s Thursday and Friday. A couple of small chances for rain there in the extended forecast. We'll talk more about that. Plus, we've got that lunar eclipse coming up. We'll give you some more details on that, too, here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Gas prices are hitting a new record here in San Antonio. AAA says we are now at the average price of gas at $3.99 a gallon. With the summer season approaching, their spokesperson is giving a forecast of what people can expect. And then looking ahead uh, to the summer travel season, there's a lot of pent up demand out there for travel. So folks are going to be really uh, hitting the road and it looks like the uh, oil and fuel markets are anticipating that and therefore we're seeing prices on the rise. Analysts say the surge is mostly due to simple supply and demand as nations stop buying Russian oil. Supplies are tightening just as spring demand is booming. A 15 year old boy being accused in a human smuggling operation. Investigators say he was shot and is now in a hospital here in San Antonio. Happened in Kinney County Monday. The sheriff there says the teen was driving a car with suspected migrants when deputies and DPS troopers tried to pull him over. Sheriff Brad Coe says that led to a chase. Investigators say the teen then tried to run over a deputy when he was shot. Three migrants who were turned over to the Border Patrol. Texas Rangers have now taken over this case. In neighboring Uvalde County, deputies uncovered a human smuggling case. This one involved three carloads of people in a vehicle stolen from San Antonio. Deputies posted these pictures on their social media site. They say the people involved are from Cuba and Honduras. Deputies say the case happened less than 24 hours from a previous human smuggling investigation. Now to the drought emergency out west. With water levels dropping to an all-time low, new restrictions are on the way. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has more. This morning, the surprising news from California. Despite the historic drought, the state is using more water, not less. Water usage rose 19% in March compared to the same period in 2020. And now unprecedented new water restrictions are being imposed, affecting 4 million people in Southern California, where beginning next month, outdoor watering will be limited to two days per week. We're three years into a major drought. And the first three months of this year were the driest ever recorded in California. And the California Senate is going one step further, passing a bill to limit indoor water usage. Right now, the state standard for daily indoor usage is 55 gallons per person. But under the bill passed by the Senate, that would be lower to 42 gallons in the coming years. In the meantime, Lake Mead, which supplies water to seven states, is evaporating before our eyes, with levels dropping 170 feet since the 1980s. With that white line to remind us what full is, it's definitely, it's, it's obvious something has is, is changed. The low water level now revealing at least two bodies, one dating back decades. The person had been shot and was stuffed in a barrel. It was kind of freaky. <laughs> we had to keep questioning ourselves if this was really real or not. The discoveries are recalling the days of organized crime in nearby Las Vegas. 
Oscar Goodman, a former Vegas mayor and defense attorney for members of the mob, tells the Associated Press, quote, there's no telling what we'll find in Lake Mead. It's not a bad place to dump a body. Authorities are working to identify those remains. As for the bill in California limiting indoor water use, it still needs to be approved by the state assembly. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. New economic numbers out today are expected to show inflation has already reached a peak, but that doesn't mean prices will be falling anytime soon. Some economists are still warning prices for things like food and gas could stay high for months. President Biden says fighting inflation is his quote unquote top domestic priority. Republican critics say inflation also stems from the Biden administration's overspending, including the stimulus checks that were distributed into the economy during the pandemic. In Washington, the House of Representatives voted last night to deliver $40 billion in aid to Ukraine. The bill increases presidential drawdown authority funding from $5 billion to $11 billion. That gives the administration the ability to send U.S. military equipment and weapons to Ukraine. The measure also includes $6 billion for other weapons, training, and intelligence support. $900 million will go towards refugees' assistance, and $54 million will be used for public health and medical support. The bill still needs to be passed by the Senate and signed by President Biden. It is the end of an era for Apple. The tech giant says it's officially discontinuing the old iPod. The digital music player first introduced back in October of 2001. It was the first portable MP3 player that could hold up to 1,000 songs. The device redefined how people bought, enjoyed, and shared music. The iPod eventually underwent several upgrades and variations, started to lose popularity as smartphones took over as the main source for listening to music on the go. Now Apple says its newest iPod Touch will be the final iteration of the device. And time now, 436 and 74 degrees for now. Still had the infant formula shortage has some parents taking drastic actions. What experts say you should avoid? And next, fans, the county judge and the mayor all reacting to a statement put out by Spurs management that's meant to stop fears of the Spurs possibly moving the franchise out of San Antonio. Yeah, I don't know if it helped or hurt. Mm. <laughs> traffic Authority right now. Let's see how things are looking before uh, we get another look at traffic. Uh, very light traffic at I-10 and Callahan on the northwest side. And taking a look outside with a live cam starting at 74 degrees. And it was warm yesterday, but a little breezy, so not too bad. We're going to be checking in with Justin to see what we can expect today. Everybody's still talking about it this morning. Spurs released that letter from managing partner Peter J. Holt. Try to calm the concerns of fans that ownership is exploring the possibility of moving our NBA franchise out of San Antonio. Those concerns twofold. One, the sale of over 30% ownership to the, of the team to outside investors over the last year. That includes billionaire Michael Dell of Austin. And more recently, Spurs requested to play as many as eight home games away from the AT&T Center over the next two seasons, including four in Austin. And here's what the letter said in part from Peter J. Holt to the city of San Antonio. I love you. I love this city, big city with a small town, casual small town feel and a great basketball team. I want to reassure you the Spurs are in San Antonio stay. There are no Spurs without the city and the people of San Antonio. Your team, our team together, we are the silver and black. Spurs fans, we are here to stay. Por vida, for life. All right, remember in a vote last Tuesday, commissioners court only allowed four games to be played outside of the arena next season. That will include two in Austin, one in Mexico, and one in the Alamo Dome as part of the Spurs 50th anniversary celebration, which will be admittedly kind of cool. Judge Nelson Wolf and Mayor Ron Nierberg reacted to the letter from the Holt saying, Peter J. Holt's heartfelt statement today could not have been said any better and should put speculation about the San Antonio Spurs plans to rest. We have full confidence the Spurs will stay in San Antonio for decades to come. Now to last night's action on the court. Game five between the Heat and Sixers all tied at two in Miami. Phillies all-star Joel Embiid uh, playing with a mass protector, broken right eye socket, but it's not going to protect against this. Embiid going for the rebound when Dwayne Dedman swipes down the ball, smashing it into his eye. He falls to the floor in pain. Amazingly, he would continue to play. Heat pull away in the second. P.J. Tucker in the corner for the three puts Miami up by 18. They pile on in the third. Tucker on the drive puts it up off the backboard, but it's Jimmy Butler slamming it home. Miami had seven players in double figures in the 120-85 win. They now lead that series three games to two. And that's a quick look at morning sports. Heavily dominated.
by our Spurs. Of course. Time now, 442 and 74 degrees for now. And just ahead, the drastic stack steps some new parents are making when it comes to trying to find formula for their new baby. And next, a celebrity chef acquitted of assaulting a woman at a Boston restaurant. Celebrity chef Mario Batali was acquitted of sexually assaulting a woman at a Boston restaurant. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, not guilty. Celebrity chef Mario Batali acquitted after being accused of forcibly kissing and groping a woman while taking selfies inside a now closed Boston restaurant in 2017. On Monday, his accuser, Natalie Tenney, taking the stand, testifying about Batali's alleged sexual misconduct. Touching of my breasts, touching of my rear end, touching all over my face. It was, it, was just, it was just a lot happening. Text messages revealed in court showed a friend advised her to play up the story to collect money from Batali. The judge ultimately siding with Batali, who opted to forego a jury and leave his fate in the judge's hands. The complaining witness has significant credibility issues. And they support the defendant's contention that her motive was financial gain. And coming up at 7 a.m., legal expert Dan Abrams weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. The shortage of infant formula has some parents looking elsewhere for needed supplies. As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says, some parents are turning to social media to feed their babies, and that can be hazardous. I have maybe a week left of formula left and that's scary. Emily Clayton never dreamed she'd be desperate to find food for her baby Finley. There are times where I visit five stores in a day. Only to find shelves like this with little to no formula. Emily turned to social media, posting her plea like so many others nationwide. She drove miles to pick up a single can. Another can that I was supposed to pick up last night and trade some of his baby items for. That's a huge thing too, trading old baby items for formula. Online, she's discovered generosity, but also greed as scammers take advantage. Moms will sell formula and then not ship it to other moms or they'll sell it for a really jacked up price. Pediatricians hear the frustration, but warn. Do not buy it from a non-reputable supplier. Um, we want to make sure that there's that, that we know what your baby's getting and that it's been screened through the FDA. And Dr. Courtney Smith says you need to know it was properly stored. Adding to Emily's struggle, not every store accepts WIC as payment. The WIC program has expanded its purchase options and tells us if clients can't find their brand or sizes to contact their local WIC office. Manufacturers and retailers saying they are doing the best they can can to put more product on the shelves. As for the FDA, they say they are making it high priority, working round the clock. So are parents like Emily, coping with a shortage that no one can say when it will end. I mean, the only thing we can do is, I don't know. I don't know. I'm at a loss for answers at this point. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I can't even imagine how stressful that would be. Yeah, it's very stressful. Hopefully something will get resolved soon. All right, traffic right now, 10 in Callahan looking great so far. We, uh, it's still very early, but we haven't seen these trouble spots yet. Good news for early Wednesday morning. Yes, ma'am. Hoping also for good news in the weather department. Will we have a, I don't want to say a slight break, but will it be an okay heat to deal with, Justin? Hmm, uh, defined okay. <laughs> Hmm, like yesterday. <laughs> yesterday wasn't too bad. Uh, yeah, there was a breeze yesterday. It did help. Okay, but the, the forecast going forward isn't so pretty. I will tell you that. We're going to see temperatures hover about where we've been, maybe go a little bit higher as we get into the weekend. Now, some of us did get rain yesterday. That is the good news. If you were out near Del Rio, a place that desperately needed some rain, uh, we picked up about 32 hundredths of an inch over an inch at Laughlin. Rock Springs close to seven tenths of an inch. So there was some good rain last night with some storms, and this fell over an area that is fairly drought stricken. Now, the drought's kind of shifting east, which is a little concerning for us here in San Antonio. This is exceptional drought here over places like Uvalde and Medina County. Farmland that needs rain in the worst way. And again, it's kind of shifting towards San Antonio. So it is good that the folks out west got some rain. It did help the drought situation there, but it stayed to the west. That rain did not move uh, east into those counties that also need it. And San Antonio certainly did not get any. As we look at the live radar, there are still a few very light showers left over, but that's it. We're not expecting much in the way of rain today, even out west. 
with uh, these uh, storms kind of coming to an end. As you look at the big picture here, there was widespread rain across parts of West Texas and uh, along the Rio Grande yesterday. Those storms have all quieted down. In our area, we've got cloudy skies right now at the airport, 74 degrees, 76 at Stinson, 74 Kelly. I wish these temperatures would come down a little bit more uh, and they may a degree or two, but that's it. We're going to stay in the 70s this morning and two points are very high. They'll stay high through about lunchtime and they'll try to fall off some into the 60s. So more humid versus oppressive, but there's still enough there that we where we will have to contend with a heat index this afternoon. Temperature wise 71 Fredericksburg, 71 New Braunfels, 74 in Hondo. I didn't find any reporting sites that are in the 60s. So we're all in the 70s here and dealing with that humidity and the forecast heat index today. So this is what it's going to feel like this afternoon. Probably up around 96, 97 here in San Antonio. And there will be some triple digits for the heat index once we get towards 4 or 5 o'clock. So be aware. Here's the bigger picture. And this is a really interesting weather pattern that we're in. We have a trough out west right there. Ridge across the middle part of the country, and that's why we've been so warm. And then you've got a big low spinning on the east coast, so it's kind of a blocking pattern. You got a low, high, low, and a lot of times these things don't move very much. The good news is high pressure will get nudged out for a little while, uh, but still our temperatures stay warm. It, it just doesn't change things much uh, as we go forward here. So the case at 12 hour forecast, cloudy skies this morning by 11 a.m., 83 degrees. And then by the afternoon, we're looking at partly cloudy skies, 93 by 3 o'clock, 95 by 4 p.m. And we probably top out somewhere around uh, 95, 96 today. 96 tomorrow, start off with clouds, afternoon sun, 96 Friday, 97 Saturday. What I've done also is put the records there, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because I think there's several days where the record high is in jeopardy, probably Sunday especially. Also, we have the total lunar eclipse. That's going on Sunday night. Uh, and it looks like we'll have good weather for that. That's good news. Um, otherwise, temperatures not so good news as uh, we're going to be close to 100 by the weekend. I like something you said yesterday during GMSA at 9. You said just because it seems like we've had some hotter weather earlier doesn't necessarily indicate a horrible summer right now. It doesn't. It doesn't. But uh, with a La Nina, chances are we are going to have a hotter, drier summer. Okay. But there's not necessarily a correlation between May weather and right. June weather. Hopefully something changes. Yeah. Maybe we get some tropical moisture in here June, right. July. Fingers crossed. Fingers that, crossed. That's one way we catch up around here, a little tropical depression or that would, system. That would be good. That would, that would help. be helpful. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 452, 74 degrees. And coming up next, why Hollywood actor James Cromwell decided to super glue his hand to the counter in Starbucks. Okay, uh, pick three numbers, 458, Fireball 3. Daily four numbers, 1353, three, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 3, 7, 12, 17, 19. And your Mega Millions, 15, 19, 20, 61, 70, Mega Ball 9, Mega Flyer 3. Good luck. A former Star Trek actor protests at a Starbucks, and Rebel Wilson is back in the movies. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Michelle Franzen. James Cromwell took a stand for vegans by super gluing his hand to a Starbucks counter in protest of the coffee chain's upcharge for non-dairy milks. The 82-year-old actor live streamed his protest on Facebook. He was joined at the New York City coffee shop with other PETA members. A Starbucks spokesperson said it respects customers' right to voice their opinions so long as it does not disrupt our store operations. High school was just like yesterday for me. Rebel Wilson is starring in her first movie since 2019. In the new film, Senior Year, she plays a high school cheerleader who suffers a head injury and falls into a coma before her senior prom. She wakes up 20 years later as a 37-year-old woman who decides to head back to high school to finish her term. Senior Year comes to Netflix on May 13th. And celebrating birthdays today, reality star Black China, she turns 34, and football star Cam Newton is 33. That's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Michelle Franzen. And time now, 457 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, lawmakers in the Senate set to put forward legislation today to codify the right to an abortion in federal law. Why that legislation is all but certain to be blocked. And are you ready for a lower cost Netflix? We're going to tell you about their new lower tier subscription plan coming up in Tech Bytes. And Stephen is in the house. We'll check with him coming up here at the top of the hour. 
as we get your Wednesday rolling on GMSA. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Today, the Senate takes up a key vote on abortion rights, why it's not expected to pass, and could there be a bipartisan compromise in the works? I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington. That story ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a warm and humid again at 74 degrees and expecting to get warmer later today once again. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 11th of May. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Tuesday yesterday. Uh, I like the breeze here and there, especially in the evening hours. It helped for mm -hmm. sure. Justin is in for Mike. Good morning. Hey, good morning to you guys. Breeze was uh, gusty yesterday. We had gusts to 2025. Did help some. I mean, our heat index yesterday jumped up to 103 at one point. I don't know that it will be as warm today, but it's still going to be hot and humid. Uh, we're kind of splitting hairs here because temperatures will be right back in the mid to upper 90s this afternoon. 75 degrees right now, 74 Uvalde, 77 in Carrizo Springs. What a warm start. And the next three days, 95, 96, 96. I think you get the idea. It's, it's going to be hot and warm, and we'll probably even go a little bit hotter Unfortunately, as we get into the weekend with uh, more sun in the forecast, let me show you the pollen count real quick. This was great news yesterday. It was just molds and they were low at 370. So not a big deal there. We're kind of moving out of tree season. You'll probably notice uh, generally just molds and with the uh, forecast being dry, that number will probably stay low too. Temperature wise, we show just 70s for most of us. It has not been much for cool down this morning. There is one spot in the 60s now. That is New Braunfels, 69 there, but 73 Helotus, 77 Stinson, 73 right now in Divine. Our case at 12 hour forecast, cloudy this morning, and then you're going to get your sun by midday. Temperatures around 86 degrees will top out close to 95, 96 this afternoon. We will get that breeze for you, Stephanie, once again, anywhere out of the southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Well, let's talk about traffic this morning. I'm hoping everything's smooth sailing, Stephen. How's well, so far right now, Justin, things look fine. Uh, you know, it's traveling on I-10 this morning. Saw a few more folks out there on the roads. And right now, TransGuide not really picking up a lot of activity. But uh, basically, you're going to have the roads to yourself. If you're traveling down 281 and Hildebrand, you can see maybe just one vehicle getting by right now. Thankfully, no big issues to talk about just yet. But let's go ahead and take you to the map. Because although we are seeing some green on the screen, we are also detecting an issue over here on the north west side or the west side. Let's go ahead and bring it in right now and we are seeing a stall that was reported by text dot there off 1604 eastbound at Wiseman Boulevard that was kind of causing some restricted flow. That means drivers were just having a little bit of trouble getting by there, but it doesn't look like our map is picking up that stall anymore, so it could have cleared out. So that's some good news. Let's check out those travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City right now, the journey from Bernie is going to be about a 25 minute drive time and those eastbound lanes coming in from I 10. No need to hurry if you're coming in from Boulevard 28 minutes right now in those southbound lanes of 281 and we are looking at a 26 minute drive time on I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So no worries there. One last drive around town 37 at Pecan Valley. The morning is moving and we will have more updates on closures that'll be coming up a little bit later on guys. Thank you, sir. Now to an important health alert. The highly contagious norovirus is making its uh, making rather unusual rounds this spring. Our Jonathan Goto joins us now with what you need to know. And Jonathan, what are some of the most important things people can do to stay healthy? Mark and Stephanie, this is a nasty stomach bug. So what can you do to protect yourself? Well, while it might sound easy, the answer is quite simple. Washing your hands often is key to fighting this virus. Now, local doctors are saying that they've seen a significant spike in norovirus cases over the past couple of months. It can be seen year round and usually spikes in the wintertime. Now, recent lab results from University Hospital showed the virus spiking in April and early May. Norovirus is if the vomiting persists and they're just not able to keep fluids down or they have signs of dehydration, we want to see them. If their mouth is dry or they're not making saliva or tears, those are concerns. If they're not urinating on a regular basis. He's also reminding parents about a global hepatitis outbreak in kids because they have very similar symptoms. But a big difference, norovirus only lasts two to three days. Right now, you can read more on this story on our website. Just look for this story on the homepage. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Jonathan. She just turned 16 less than two weeks ago, and now she's dead. This morning, we are learning more about the shooting death of Navaya Martinez from the South Side that we first told you about yesterday here on GMSA. Now, the teen was found shot and killed in the backseat of a stolen car just around the corner from her home near Warhorse and Five Palms yesterday morning. Police right now are not saying much about the motive, and the family is keeping quiet, too until investigators have more leads. However, they do have a message for the shooter. Just turn yourself in. I mean, she was just a child. Now, Martinez was one of 10 siblings. She's described by her family as a sweet, funny, and smart teen who will be greatly missed. In an effort to reduce violent crimes across the country, the Biden administration is now cracking down on ghost guns. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives refers to the guns private, as privately made firearms or PMFs. They lack serial numbers, making it hard for law enforcement to track them. National data from the ATF shows between January of 2016 and December of last year, 45,000 reports of suspected ghost guns were recovered by law enforcement. Nearly 700 were used in homicides or robberies. That's why Melissa Garcia with ATF says they're gearing up to implement changes. It will require markings, including a serial number, so that their firearms can be traced if recovered by law enforcement. And it also requires a background check to be completed before a partially completed firearm or firearms kits can be sold. Lone Star handgun President Josh Felker doesn't think this rule change is the answer in reducing violent crime. He explained even a gun with a serial number can be made untraceable by trying to file it off. Uh, criminals all of a sudden, they can't... Uh get or manufacture their own gun in the house or steal it from somebody else. There's millions and millions and millions of guns out there. Rule changes for ghost guns don't go into effect until August. In response, Senator Ted Cruz and 21 others have introduced a Congressional Review Act joint resolution of disapproval to try and block it. Time now, 507 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead, Netflix could soon be out with a newer, cheaper subscription plan. Also next, how you can get involved as the Special Olympics returning to Morgan's Wonderland this weekend. Outside with Live Cam, how hot will we get in the next five to seven days? Justin has a forecast, and he'll get you in touch on whether records are in jeopardy. 510 later today, the abortion debate takes center stage on Capitol Hill. The Senate will vote on a measure to codify abortion rights into federal law. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with more. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer drawing a hard line for Republicans ahead of today's vote on codifying abortion rights into federal law. Either vote to protect the rights of women to exercise freedom over their own bodies or stand with the Supreme Court as 50 years of women's rights are reduced to rubble. The vote, though unlikely to move forward, is a direct response to last week's draft opinion leak signaling the U.S. Supreme Court's conservative majority could strike down Roe v. Wade. This week, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said a future Republican-controlled Congress could pass a nationwide abortion ban. When pressed Tuesday, McConnell sidestepped and instead deferred to states. The word possible refers to the Supreme Court's decision if, in fact, that becomes the decision, makes it possible. Speaking before a Senate committee, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was asked about the economic impact of overturning Roe. I believe that eliminating the right of women to make decisions about when and whether to have children would have very damaging effects um, on the economy. Let's look at low birth rates coupled with an aging population are a threat to our future economic prosperity. Some Democrat-led states are ready in responses should Roe fall. And do you try and come after our doctors? You try and come after, um, you know, women who come into the state or women in this state? Not going to happen here. Connecticut now expanding abortion access and protections for practitioners. New York announcing a $35 million fund to support abortion patients and providers. And behind the scenes, a bipartisan effort to preserve access to abortion and contraceptives under federal law. Senator Tim Kaine, a Democrat, tells ABC he's been in talks with Republican Senator Susan Collins about compromise legislation. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home for the first time in two years, the Special Olympics is returning to Morgan's Wonderland here in San Antonio. 
And as the people at Morgan's Wonderland gear up for this weekend, they're also looking for volunteers. So founder Gordon Hartman is anticipating thousands of people to show up to the event. He says anyone who wants to help out is encouraged to do so. There are so many different things, all the way from possibly being a buddy with someone who is in the Special Olympics to possibly monitoring, uh, giving out the medals to uh, making sure that people uh, know where to go. I mean, there's just so many different things. And if you'd like to volunteer, you can go to SOTX.org. The Special Olympics runs May 12th through the 15th. You can find all this information on our website at kset.com. Good luck to Gordon and the crew out there at Morgan's Wonderland. Going to be a fun weekend. 513 on your Wednesday, 74 degrees. And still ahead, how AT&T is improving its services that will allow for faster 911 emergency response time. And next, why EA Sports is ending its partnership with FIFA. I wonder why people are always on their phones. They're banking with Bank of America. Look at this guy. He bought those tickets on his credit card and he's racking up the rewards. She's using Zelle to pay him back for the hot dogs he's about to buy. That's going to bring it to and the, the announcer, You're after three. He's not checking the stats. He's finding some investment ideas with Meryl. Out there. And third, as you know, in baseball means three. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? Alivex. Its revolutionary rollerball design delivers fast, powerful, long lasting pain relief. Alive it and see what's possible. Fur, you won't phase me. Unlike Zyrtec, Allegra won't make me drowsy. Allegra starts working two times faster than Claritin. So take Allegra before allergy symptoms take over you. Enter the Allegra sweepstakes for a chance to win up to $16,000 in prizes. In today's Tech Bites, a less expensive Netflix. A New York Times report says the streaming service may begin offering a lower cost membership by the end of the year, but it would come with commercials. It comes after Netflix announced last month that it lost 200,000 subscribers. AT&T will now use the GPS location of your mobile device to route 911 calls. The goal is to connect callers to closer call centers to allow faster response times. AT&T insists the feature will only be turned on when you make an emergency call. Finally, one of the most profitable teams in video game history is breaking up. EA Sports is ending its partnership with World Soccer's governing body, FIFA. After one last release in the fall, EA will continue making soccer games under the brand EA Sports FC. Those are your Tech Bites. Hope you have a great day. Time now, 517. At last check of those TransGuy cameras, things look pretty good. Yeah, I think they look pretty good right now. Let's get a look at TransGuide. Um, you know, we did see a few more folks out there earlier this morning, but thankfully these TransGuide cameras aren't capturing any trouble out on the roadways for this Wednesday morning. 37 at Pecan Valley. Things look to be moving quite nicely there. And 35 at Walsham, a little bit busier. Uh, saw a few folks, more uh, more folks than usual, I should say, down I-10 heading into work this morning. But just remember to take it easy. No need to rush out the door. Let's get that wide look at the map because we are seeing just, again, more green and pavement on those TransGuide cameras. So no slowdowns just yet, but we want you to make sure we want to make sure that you plan your commute. Let's go ahead and talk about what's going to be taking place tomorrow because uh, here off our I 35 on the northeast side, there will be some pothole work. Uh, this is only going to take place one day. It's Thursday, May 12th. That will be from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. Drivers, that's when you can expect various lane closures on the northbound frontage road from Starlight Terrace to Crestway Drive. And of course, time to grab those phones, open your camera app and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that should have an updated list on the closures that are taking place in your area and of course anything that could be impacting your drive time. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Justin's here with some chilling weather history with particular focus on this date. Yeah, we're going to go back to 1953 Waco, Texas. This uh, marks the date that we saw the deadliest tornado in Texas history, at least since 1900, basically since records have been kept. And you see the list here. Uh, the top 10 deadliest tornadoes in Texas history and notice that every single one of these is in May or April. So these are our two months where we would typically see quite a bit of severe weather, but the Waco uh, that was a huge one. That was an F5 tornado back on this day in 1953 did a ton of damage to downtown Waco uh, killed sadly 114 people injured 597 and destroyed more than 600 homes and businesses. So uh, quite a day in history. This is also 
uh, the uh, the same day that a tornado back in 1970 went through the town of Lubbock. So it's a very busy day, a busy season in Texas this time of year. Not so much this year, though. We haven't seen a lot of severe weather. It's been fairly quiet. The drought, of course, has been very prominent here across the state of Texas. We did have some storms yesterday. A little bit of severe weather here and there. We saw some heavier rain down around Del Rio, but that has all since dissipated. And here in San Antonio, dry. Nothing. We didn't get any rain out of those storms yesterday. 75 degrees right now. Southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. That dew point, that's at 70. So it's still pretty sticky out there. 74 in Uvalde, 74 right now in Hondo, 73 Pleasanton. The one spot that we're noticing has finally fallen into the 60s. That's around New Braunfels, 69 there. And you've got uh, 77 down there at Stinson. Forecast heat index today. So this is uh, combining the temperature and the moisture, what it will feel like. And we think heat index values will be up around 97 here in San Antonio, feeling like it's in the 100s in a lot of spots, uh, especially south of San Antonio. So it is going to be another brutally hot day. And I wish I could tell you that things change a little bit, but it really doesn't. And this dew point tracker, well, the line shouldn't be coming all the way down here. But I did want to show you that dew points do fall off some as we get later into the week, at least during the afternoons. So that helps some, but we're also going to get some hot temperatures. So you're just trading one thing for the other. Yeah, we lose a little bit of the humidity. The air temperatures come up some. The situation across the country, uh, again, it's a pretty interesting setup here. We have a trough out west, so that gives you some cold temperatures in places like Portland. San Francisco right now, it's 49 degrees. But in the middle part of the country, you got 70s all the way up to Chicago. This is really unusual. Chicago at 5 a.m. in the morning, is sitting at 75 degrees, about where we are. So it shows you how that warmth has been spreading north. And then along the east coast, we have some more cool weather with an area of low pressure. That pattern does break down some, but it doesn't mean anything for us because we basically stay status quo here. Clouds in the morning, and then sun in the afternoon, and that brings those temperatures up. 86 degrees by lunchtime, southeasterly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. I think we top out at about 95 this afternoon, around 4 or 5 o'clock. And that heat index again will be somewhere around 97, 98 here in town. Extended forecast. We go 96 tomorrow, 96 on Friday. I put some records here over the weekend. I think these records will be challenged. So the record on Saturday is 97. We're forecasting 97. The record on Sunday, 96. We're forecasting 97. And from there, it only goes up. We're going 98 Monday, 97 on Tuesday. Potentially, if this pans out, we could be looking at a four day string there of record breaking heat, which is pretty incredible considering we've already broken two records so far this month and we're on pace to see one of the hottest Mays on record. Mm, OK, that really does put things into perspective, doesn't it? Hmm. We're hoping for some changes somewhere down the line. You said it, brother. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers 522, crossed. 74 degrees on your Wednesday. And up next in your morning spotlight, a 93-year-old actor gets a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And Fred Armisen is featured in a new music video. Another star added to the Hollywood Walk of Fame, an SNL veteran Fred Armisen gets animated. Here's CNN's Alicia Stanford with the Hollywood Minute. James Hong now has his own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The 93-year-old actor was honored for his contributions to films. He has appeared in some 700 projects in 68 years of movie making, including Big Trouble in Little China. Hong's Everything Everywhere All at Once co-star Jamie Lee Curtis was on hand for the big reveal, as was actor Daniel Day Kim, who spearheaded the effort to honor the filmed legend. It's all one extreme from the heavy road down to the comedy. I'm very proud of that, that I've done everything. And now, uh, I don't know, should I ride off in the sunset? What do you think? Not yet. Not yet. The ceremony included a traditional Chinese dragon dance. Hong is the oldest honoree to receive a star on the Walk of Fame and the only living actor to have worked with Clark Gable and Groucho Marx. Fred Armisen is looking for love in the new animated video from Osaka pop star in Lost and Found. The actor and comedian pulls out all the stops when he eyes the girl of his dreams working in a grocery store. There are a lot of hidden gems in this short, including a salute to Saturday morning breakfast cereals and TV singing groups such as the Monkees, the Partridge Family, and the Archies. In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Stanford. 
527, about 74 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, gas prices are now at a record high, and an inflation report out later today is expected to show what else is busting budgets. We're going to have a first look. Still ahead, are you sure you're using your sunscreen properly? We have some important things to remember so you don't get burned this summer. And Starbucks is out with a new chocolatey drink just in time for the hot summer months. Details coming up. Making headlines this hour, details on a new inflation report expected to be released this morning that includes more rising gas prices. And taking a look outside with live cans, starting off at 74 degrees, which is pretty mild compared to the afternoon temperatures we'll have this week. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 11th of May. Thanks for joining us. Let's go ahead and check in with Justin to see what we can expect. You know, our average this time of year is 85 degrees, which wouldn't be so bad, right? We could deal with that, but we're forecasting 95. And so far this month, we've been above average every single day. Today, we're forecasting to be about 10 degrees above the average. So here we go. It is, uh, it's just been a rough month so far. And there's no signs that we're going to see temperatures dip closer to average or below average anywhere in the near future. We look at the radar this morning. There were some showers, some storms last night across the Rio Grande, Eagle Pass and Del Rio. Some decent rain out there. Those storms have fallen apart. We did not get any rain here in San Antonio. We've just got some cloud cover now moving in and those clouds will be with us for a time this morning. 70 in New Braunfels, 71 Kerrville, 74 in Hondo. Everybody's in the 70s here across Bear County. Stinson, one of the warm spots sitting at 77 this morning. So not a lot of relief. We'll see those temperatures climb once again once that sun comes up. Clouds will break up noontime. We're at 86. We top out around 95 degrees today. It'll feel warmer than that. 96, 97 with that heat index. Some places could feel as warm as 100 degrees with the heat and humidity today. Uh, we've got an eclipse coming up. We're going to talk about that and when you can see it here in just a bit. But let's go over to Stephen now and talk about what's going on on those roads. Not a whole lot. Thankfully, US 90 at 410. We did have some road work taking place out there, but looks like things could be wrapping up right now. 1604 at Bandera looking pretty quiet as well. The morning's off to a pretty decent start. I would say I tend to Callahan not looking bad there, but just be on the lookout. Uh, there's always going to be something happening, particularly closures, uh, but we'll get to that a little bit later on in the newscast. If you have to head out the door right now at the top of this half hour, thankfully no issues that we are seeing just yet. Just lots of green on the screen, which is what we like to say each and every morning. But if your destination is going to be San Antonio here in the next few moments, well, you're in luck right now. 29 minutes in those westbound lanes heading in from Seguin 22. If you're heading in from 87 and Lavernia and 28 minutes up coming up from Flotusville. So no trouble there. Uh, roadways are looking fine so far as we're getting this Wednesday morning rolling, but we're going to be watching things closely. Make sure to do the same guys. Thank you, Stephen. From gas to groceries, prices have been going up. A report coming out today will show exactly how much. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, it'll give the consumer price index for April and indicate how much it's changed year over year. I do think the inflation we're suffering through right now is probably the peak, the worst of it. Today, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is laying out just how much prices have risen over the last year. It's reporting the consumer price index for April. I don't think we get to the other side of this high inflation until the pandemic fades and the worst of the fallout from the Russian and Ukraine invasion is behind us. Gas prices have hit a new record in the U.S. AAA says a year ago, a gallon of regular cost an average of $2.97. As of Tuesday, that price was a buck forty higher. And economists predict it will climb more during the summer travel season. In some states, people are already paying more than $5 a gallon. Republicans blame the White House for high costs. They took an economy that was ready to soar, turned it around, and drove it into the ground. The Biden administration blames Russia's war in Ukraine, the pandemic and supply chain problems. The gas uh, prices set uh, by global petroleum markets, not by the president of the United States. Americans are just trying to get by. It's just breaking the bank. I still have to go to work every day and I'm not making any more money. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And Mike Tyson will not face criminal charges over an incident on a plane last month. A video appeared to show that Tyson bending over his seat and repeatedly hitting a passenger in the row behind him. The district attorney in California says he decided not to file misdemeanor battery charges against Tyson based on the circumstances surrounding the confrontation. Those circumstances included the conduct of the alleged victim leading up to that incident. The DA also said both men involved asked that charges not be filed. 
Tyson representative said at the time the other passenger began harassing Tyson and threw a water bottle at him. Former President Donald Trump could soon be back on Twitter. Twitter's soon-to-be owner Elon Musk now says that he would restore Trump's banned account on the platform. Musk remarks at an automotive conference his first public acknowledgement of what had been widely expected since Musk announced plans to buy the social media giant for $44 billion. Musk called Twitter's decision to ban Trump in January 2020 a mistake and a quote-unquote morally bad decision. And time now is 535 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, Starbucks' newest menu item and when you can get it. Sunscreen, so important when it comes to protecting your skin from getting cancer, unless it's used in the wrong way. So coming up next, some sunscreen common mistakes you should avoid. Outside with live cam right now don't have to worry about the sun yet but it will be up in a little bit it's going to be a nice day around here in south texas just another very warm one looking ahead some potential record breakers justin will have more straight ahead 538 skin cancer is the most common cancer in the u.s however even sunscreen cannot help if it's not put on properly cnn's mandy gaither shows us some of the most common sunscreen mistakes as the weather gets warmer, don't get burned by a lack of sun protection. If you use sunscreen on a daily basis, an SPF of just 15, you can actually decrease your risk of squamous cell carcinoma, a type of skin cancer, by almost 40%. Dr. Susan Masick, a dermatologist at The Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center, says the biggest sunscreen mistake people make is not using any. They assume they don't need it. They assume that um, they're just going to be outside for a short period of time. Masick says sunscreen should be a daily routine, whether it's sunny or cloudy. Use a wide, broad spectrum UVA and UVB protective sunscreen of at least 25 to 30 SPF for everyday use or at least 50 SPF when outdoors for a long time. You have to apply uh, about a half hour before you head out the doors. You want to reapply every two to three hours because after some period of time it's not as protective as it as it once was when you first apply it remember to hit the often forgotten areas like the tops of feet hands and the exposed areas of the chest and neck also don't forget to check the expiration date the good rule of thumb is that each spring just buy a whole new set of sunscreens have them in your car have them in your beach bag have them by the door so you're always going to be applying them consistently Masick says mineral sunblocks provide a good deal of sun protection but chemical sunscreens blend in more easily she says either are good to use as long as as there's UVA and UVB protection. Okay. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Time now, it's 540 and 74 degrees for now. Up next, this furry friend needs a new home. ADL is over here. We're talking about a new home coming up. Look at how good this little baby is sitting here. Yo, oh, you have just those soft brown eyes. I Julie's know. here from the Animal Defense League. Who is this girl? She is such a good girl. Her name is Angel, and she's 11 years old, and she hasn't been with us that long. She actually came in with a cat friend. Oh. So, um, unfortunately, her owner passed away. So you can see how sweet she is. She's definitely known a lot of love in her life. Oh, she likes it right behind the ear. Right yes. There. yes. Mm -hmm. So we really want to find her a loving home. She's still, you know, got a good uh, length of life ahead of her. And I mean, she's already an amazing dog. Personality wise, just walking in here doesn't look like an 11 year old dog. Doesn't no. act like an 11 year old dog. No. Um, she hasn't missed many meals. She has not missed many I meals. Mean, but I should talk, but, <laughs> still, you know, so, yeah. but that can be, you know, that that's something that can be changed. And it is funny. I was laughing because on her kennel, it says short walks. So we'll start with short walks and <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. Right, Angel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what you got going on? Well, right now we're really excited because we are partnering with Bissell Pet Foundation. Mm -hmm. So um, this week is Empty the Shelters. So we really encourage everybody in the community to come out um, to any shelter, but certainly to ours, the Animal Defense League, to our three locations, because all of our pets, like Angel, who are six months and older, are only $25. Wow. 
Yeah, so really, like, this is an That's initiative fantastic. where um, nationwide, um, Kathy Bissell is helping us to move as many pets out of the shelter as possible. Okay. So we ask the community to please engage and join us, and we've got some great pets um, on campus. Well, nice thing about a dog like this is you know exactly what you're getting. Yeah. Uh, Personality-wise, she is very well behaved, likes those nice short walks. Yeah, potty especially. trained, just a <laughs> yeah, sweet, so sweet girl. Head on out there to the uh, Animal Defense League, 11300 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center across from the Zoo or the PetSmart over there on uh, Walsing, Wind yeah. Windcrest. Yeah. Yes. On mm -hmm. Windcrest. Or give them a call 655-1481, adltexas.org. Thank you, dear. Yay. <laughs> How cute. In your morning consumer headlines, Peloton is running out of cash as it fights to make a turnaround. The at-home fitness company reports quarterly sales tumbled 15% compared to the same quarter a year ago. And it lost $757 million last quarter. Wow also reported it had $879 million in cash at the end of the quarter. Peloton CEO said that leaves it thinly capitalized. It prompted the company to borrow a significant amount of money to keep operations running. And as people return to gyms, Peloton has been struggling to maintain the huge growth it saw during the early days of the pandemic. Bike and subscription sales have stagnated, inventory is high, and demand is declining. If you like chocolate, Starbucks has a new drink for you right now. Starbucks adding a new chocolate cold brew to its menu. The drink is topped with a light chocolate cream foam and is sweetened with vanilla syrup. Cold beverages like iced coffees and frappuccinos have been extremely successful at Starbucks. NRM CEO Howard Schultz said in last week's earnings call that they account for almost 80% of the business. Starbucks says its new chocolatey drink is meant to convey a nostalgic feeling of summer but will be available all year long. Well, there you go, Steph. Sounds good. Right? Perfect for these hot days ahead. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. Let's go ahead and check in with Steven. Are you looking forward to a new Starbucks drink or just <laughs> coffee in general? Well, I just switched to iced coffee this morning. I made my first ice shake and espresso, three shots of espresso and some brown sugar in it. That sounds like a lot, but uh, I mean, it's doing the job. It looked really good. Looks it good. was very delicious. Because yeah, you had a nice, clear tumbler. Okay. <laughs> okay? Yes, I have a nice, clear cup, and I'm okay. I, have, I haven't had that coffee crash just yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm going to go, you know, have Stevens coffee instead of Starbucks. Coffee. I'll be happy to make you one. Thank you. All right, maybe, maybe someday soon. Uh, let's get a look at the roadways right now. If you are going to go grab your iced coffee, thankfully you won't encounter any delays just yet. I-10 at Callahan, things look to be moving quite slowly there, but look at it a little bit busier here near 35, 35 pardon me, at Brooklyn. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a, talk about what we're seeing on the map because we're seeing lots of pavement there on those trans guide cameras. And as we see here on the map, just lots of green. No trouble detected just yet. We did have a stall earlier that was reported near the northwest side, but that has cleared out. And right now looks like things will be clear for you if you have to hit the roads. But be prepared because there's going to be some road work taking place this time off Wurzbach Parkway. Barrier work that's been current but should be wrapping on Monday, May 23rd, according to TxDOT. Keep in mind, drivers, that's 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. Single westbound main lane closure is what you can expect there from West Military Drive there to Ingram Road. So be prepared and always make sure that you follow KSAT.com slash traffic for the latest on those closures. But thankfully, things look like they're moving just fine here, guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. And uh, our weather team's been talking about this for a couple days now, setting up for some decent viewing for a lunar eclipse. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm a little bit of a nerd when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I think it's going to be awesome. And we got the solar eclipse coming up just, just a little bit. Just yeah. Uh, solar eclipse coming up in 2024, which is going to be even more awesome. So uh, let's talk about the lunar eclipse. This is a Sunday night into Monday. Here's how it plays out. Okay, we've got the sun over there. There's the Earth. And when the sun rays uh, come across the Earth, once it casts a shadow, you get red light on the back side of Earth here. So once the moon moves into position, which again will happen uh, on Sunday night, uh, this will all play out like this. We'll get that shadow, and uh, we'll be in the, the, the path here of the, the total lunar eclipse, which will be really cool. We think viewing should be good for this Sunday night, so check it out. That's going to happen, uh, again, Sunday night, sometime around uh, 10 o'clock or so. We'll get you some of those times coming up, but it uh, should be really, really awesome. Uh, rainfall. Yesterday, we did get some places like Del Rio, Laughlin Air Force Base, uh, Brackettville, Kickapoo Caverns picked up some decent rain out of some thunderstorms uh, that moved out of the west yesterday. Fell over areas that are fairly drought stricken. Uh, this is the latest drought monitor. And you'll notice that places like Del Rio are in severe to extreme drought. Now, the exceptional drought, this maroon color here, is shifting east. Not what we want to see. Places like Medina, Uvalde County, 
underneath that uh, exceptional drought, and that's a lot of farmland. We need some rain here too, but it fell generally west of that yesterday. And uh, most of that rain has quieted down this morning. We're not expecting much later today. You can see all the storms that lined up yesterday across West Texas. Those storms have died out there in Oklahoma. Same story here along the Rio Grande. But we do have some leftover cloud cover, so that'll stick with us for a little while this morning. Right now here in San Antonio, 75 degrees at the airport, 76 stints and 73 Kelly, 73 at Randolph. We've got some light southeasterly winds, and just about everybody's in the 70s. New Braunfels briefly cooled down below 70 degrees, but now it's back up to 71. So we're all warm, we're all humid. And the dew point trend, well, it's going to stay pretty high through about lunchtime and then it tries to fall off some. We saw this yesterday. But it doesn't fall off enough to where we don't have a heat index. There's still enough moisture there where it's going to feel a little bit warmer than that actual air temperature. And so as we look at the forecast heat index, your feels like temperature, by the time we get to 4 or 5 o'clock, it's going to feel like 97 here in San Antonio. It's going to feel like 100 almost for sure there across southern parts of Bear County. We saw that heat index really jump up yesterday. Uh, places like Stinson, even here in San Antonio, we saw the heat index jump up above 100 yesterday. Water vapor shows this uh, pattern that we're in, and we've basically had sort of a summertime ridge over top of us. It, it's kind of a blocking pattern. We have a low out west, a low to the east, and we're stuck in the middle where there's high pressure and control. Now, this does break down some of this pattern, but it doesn't break down to the point where it changes our, our fortunes for rain because uh, rain basically is staying out of the forecast for now. Uh, the KSAT 12 hour forecast shows cloudy skies this morning. We'll break out into some sun by noontime 86 and then we'll top out in the mid 90s this afternoon. 95 southeast Julie winds will pick up some 10 to 15 miles per hour. Extended forecast will point out a couple of things here. We have a small, small chance of a storm on Saturday. It's about the only glimmer of hope that I see. Right now we're going to put in a 10% chance. Otherwise, we're near record heat Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And there's that lunar eclipse. Totality around 1029 to around 1154 if you want to check it out. I wish this time of year we could have a prolonged solar eclipse. It's going to help bring temperatures down for a while. Yeah, that would help. But 2024? All right. Okay. Right yeah. around the corner. Mark your calendars. Okay. <laughs> we will. You'll remind us, though. Hashtag I, I probably will, yeah. <laughs> hashtag excited. Uh, 551, <laughs> about 74 degrees. And coming up next, Zach Efron stars in a new version of a Stephen King story. We're going to have a preview of Firestarter. Actually, a remake from Drew Mer Barrymore yes. back in the day. That's right. Yeah, a long time ago. Pick three numbers, 458, Fireball 3. Daily four numbers, 1353. Three. Fireball 7. Cash 5, 3, 7, 12, 17, 19. And your Mega Millions, 15, 19, 20, 61, 70, Mega Ball 9, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the critical new report on inflation, what the White House is doing to try to bring some relief, and where you can go to find the lowest gas prices. Also, we'll have the latest on the fugitive prisoner who was on the run for 11 days, now back behind bars in Alabama after being extradited. And the exclusive new video of the chase to catch him and that former corrections officer. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. She's not a robot, Annie. She's a little girl with little girl emotions, which are wildly unpredictable. A young girl deals with more than just growing pains in Firestarter, based on the Stephen King novel. The world that Stephen created in this novel is just uh, fun, exciting. It's it's really keeps you on the edge of your seat, and uh, you know it, it's kind of the genesis of a superhero or maybe supervillain. We don't really know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of ambiguous. Kind of I can help you. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Ryan Kira Armstrong portrays the pyrokinetic adolescent and credits director Keith Thomas with helping her performance. I'm a monster! <laughs> For this film, more than 95% of those fire effects are real in camera. Uh, from flamethrowers to lighting our actors on fire, <laughs> which is always, you know, always a challenge. I don't want to hurt anyone, but it feels kind of good. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
Need to thank our my producer Hardy, fellow SFA lumberjack, for this story. Lots of chopping and sawing going on at this sporting event. Turns out there's a new world record holder in the small final at the 2022 Still Timber Sports Trophy event. Matt Kogar came with a record time of 50.4.68. One of the dozen elite lumberjack athletes are set to compete for the World Trophy event in Austria later this month. Good luck, guys. Right now on KSAT.com, a new type of show coming to San Antonio. If you enjoyed Hamilton or In the Heights, this has a similar style. Lynn manuel Miranda is one of the founders of this freestyle hip-hop comedy show. It's set to open May 18th. Check out all the show's details online at KSAT.com. And we know we got your attention with that one. Let's well, head in the next hour of GMSA. We've got chilling video from Arizona that shows the moment a man pulls out a gun in a road rage incident. Now, the very latest on the baby formula crisis, the situation becoming dire. We have more details ahead, and Stephen is tracking traffic right now, as he always does right now, checking the roads at 35 upper and lower levels at Brooklyn. There's I-10 at the Y with the skyline in the background. We'll be right back. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. A stomach bug causing concern coming up on GMSA. We'll tell you what doctors are saying and how you can protect yourself and your family. Today, the Senate takes up a key vote on abortion rights, why it's not expected to pass, and could there be a bipartisan compromise in the works? I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington. That story ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting at a humid 74 degrees. Uh, good luck out there with your hair. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, May 11th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, the heat, maybe a lot for a lot of people, but in some ways we got a little bit of a break with the breeze. We did. A little bit of a break yesterday. Looking ahead to today and this weekend, especially that lunar eclipse. Justin is very excited. If you missed it earlier, his his enthusiasm is contagious. Yeah. Well, and by the way, Steph, I spent like three minutes on my hair this morning, and that was about two minutes too long. But it's uh, this humidity, jealous. I tell you. Jealous. It really does it to you. <laughs> uh, I am excited about the lunar eclipse, by the way. And we've got a great shot of the moon here. This is from Peggy out of Bernie, the moon aura before the eclipse. We're, we're all excited for it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel the excitement. It's palpable. Uh, we've got uh, some clouds out there this morning, so the moon's kind of hard to see. But we're going to see those clouds uh, shift out this afternoon. We'll get a lot of sun. Uh, later today with those hot temperatures. Pollen count from yesterday is just molds and they're in the low category 370. I suspect we'll see a pretty good looking pollen count again today. We'll bring that to you once we get it. Temperatures 70 in Austin, 72 near Braunfels, 74 Hondo, 71 in Kerrville, and uh, 73 hello to 70 right now Bernie stage. It's a warm, humid morning and the heat index uh, this afternoon is going to jump up into the 90s, if not upper 90s in, in several spots. So we'll have cloud cover early, then the uh, clouds do break up. Noontime, 86 degrees, 88 by 1 p.m. And by 5 p.m., we're at 95. Southeasterly winds 10 to 15, and that heat index, as I mentioned, into the upper 90s later today. More heat on the way. We could see some record-challenging heat. I know it's hard to believe at this point, but we're still going with this hot forecast. We'll have more on that in just a bit. But, Stephen... I'm imagining things are trying to pick up some. Well, Justin, I just want to say that your hair looks 100. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so does your stuff and Mark. So Aww. anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and look at traffic because there's not a lot to talk about here from Transguide cameras. You can see 90 West at Zazamora. Things are moving, but not having any trouble out there from these shots. Uh, you can see 281 at Nicoma. Pretty quiet still as we are now in the 6 a.m. hour. But keep in mind, this is that hour when things really start to change out on the roadways. So just be prepared and stay alert. Uh, let's get that wide look at the map. Thankfully, no big issues to report just yet. But as I said, the morning is still relatively Young. Let's go ahead and talk about those travel times. If you're going to be heading into the San Antonio area in the next few moments, it's a 28 minute drive time on I 37 northbound Pleasant Drive from Pleasanton. We're looking at 19 minutes on Highway 90 heading in from Castroville, and your arrival from Lytle should be about a 17 minute drive time in those northbound lanes from 35. So, no big deal there. So, thankfully, our, our fellow neighbors there won't have any trouble getting into the San Antonio area just yet. But just again, remember to stay alert. We're going to be tracking traffic and have more updates right here on on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Now to an important health alert. The highly contagious norovirus is making the rounds this spring. Jonathan Cotto joins us now with what you need to know. And Jonathan, what are some of the most important things people can do to stay healthy? 
Mark and Stephanie, this is a nasty stomach bug. So what can you do to prevent it? While it may sound simple, washing your hands is key to fighting the virus. Now, local doctors are saying they've seen a significant spike in norovirus cases in the last couple of months. It can be seen year-round and usually spikes in the wintertime. Recent lab results from University Hospital showed the virus spiking in April and early May. Now, norovirus is hard to control, so once it's in circulation because it can't be wiped out with alcohol-based cleaners, that means hand sanitizers won't work well, and it's why washing your hands is so important. So if your family ends up with norovirus, make sure to stay hydrated and also know when it's time to see a doctor. If the vomiting persists and they're just not able to keep fluids down or they have signs of dehydration, we want to see them. If their mouth is dry or they're not making saliva or tears, those are concerns. If they're not urinating on a regular basis. He's also reminding parents about a global hepatitis outbreak in kids because they have very similar symptoms, but a big difference. Norovirus only lasts two to three days. Right now, you can read more on this story by heading over to our website, ksat.com, on how to protect yourself and your family. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. This morning, we are learning more about the shooting death of a teenage girl on the city's south side. It's a story we first brought you yesterday on GMSA, and we have learned her name is Nevea Martinez, and she turned 16 less than two weeks ago. She was found shot and killed in the backseat of a stolen car just around the corner from our home near Warhorse and Five Palms. At this time, police have not said much about a motive for the shooting. More hurdles this morning for an area school district. First voters rejected two bonds for Medina Valley ISD. Now the lone finalist for the superintendent job of the district is backing out. In a letter, the board of trustees said Dr. Samuel Nix has withdrawn his name from consideration. The district now working to figure out next steps as it continues its search. It comes just days after voters turned down two bonds that would have helped build several new schools and a new stadium. And later today, the abortion rights debate takes center stage on Capitol Hill. The Senate will vote on a measure to codify abortion rights into federal law. The latest fallout from that Supreme Court draft opinion leak indicating Roe versus Wade could be in jeopardy. ABC's Justin Finch has more. Good morning. This afternoon's abortion rights vote is being called one of the most important in decades, though it's not expected to go far because Democrats don't have the 60 votes needed to move ahead. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer drawing a hard line for Republicans ahead of today's vote on codifying abortion rights into federal law. Either vote to protect the rights of women to exercise freedom over their own bodies or stand with the Supreme Court as 50 years of women's rights are reduced to rubble. The vote unlikely to move forward. This week, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said a future Republican-controlled Congress could pass a nationwide abortion ban. Speaking before a Senate committee, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen was asked about the economic impact of overturning Roe. I believe that eliminating the right of women to make decisions about when and whether to have children would have very damaging effects um, on the economy. Let's look at low birth rates coupled with an aging population are a threat to our future economic prosperity. Some Democrat led states are ready in responses should Roe fall. Connecticut now expanding abortion access and protections for practitioners. New York announcing a $35 million fund to support abortion patients and providers. And behind the scenes, a bipartisan effort to preserve access to abortion and contraceptives under federal law. Senator Tim Kaine, a Democrat, tells ABC he's been in talks with Republican Senator Susan Collins about compromise legislation. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. In your morning consumer news, investors heading into the trading day after mixed Tuesday for the markets, a mixed Tuesday. S&P closed up slightly, 0.2%. NASDAQ gained 1%, but the Dow posted its fourth losing session in a row, closing down 0.3%. And new warnings from the tech industry. The explosion of remote work options could mean more high paying jobs at American companies could go to people in other countries. They're pushing lawmakers this week for an expansion of visa programs to allow more foreign tech workers into the U.S. They say if Congress won't budge, companies will likely just keep more workers in places like India and China. Now to the question that many Americans are asking, when will prices start coming down? We can get some clues later this morning when the government releases its monthly report on inflation. 
ABC's Justin Finch reports. Today's report from the government is expected to show that America's 40 year high inflation has already peaked. The big question now, when will prices start dropping? Analysts predict the report will show an inflation rate of 8.1% last month, a decrease from 8.5% in March. But some economists warn core inflation, which excludes food and gas prices, could stay high for months. I want every American to know that I'm taking inflation uh, very seriously. President Biden says fighting inflation is his top domestic priority. But Tuesday suggested things could still get worse. How long do you think it will be until we see prices coming down? I'm not going to predict that, but I know what we have to do to make sure that we can bring it down. The president pointed to several steps his administration has taken to lower prices, but blamed pandemic disruptions and the war in Ukraine for rising prices. His critics say inflation also stems from the Biden administration's overspending, including the stimulus checks that pumped money into the economy. We've got a stock market going down. So, I, I mean, this ha he doesn't have any ideas. This was, he was confusing. He put up no ideas of what he's going to get done. Today, President Biden heads to Illinois, where he's expected to announce steps to lower food prices. He's also considering lifting tariffs on Chinese products to lower prices on those goods. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And here at home on KSET.com, we know San Antonio shoppers love their HEVs. However, some stores are busier than others. Uh, yeah, we're getting a look at uh, new data tracking grocery store visits through foot traffic data. I was just looking at some of this data, make sure it all jives here. Turns out the shirts HEB location topped all others, logging almost uh, 128,000 visits. Uh, that store may see some relief after a new HEB location opened in Cibolo. A new spot doesn't open until June of 2023. Second busiest is the HEB on the southeast side at 3323 Southeast Military Drive. You can check out the top 10 locations with the most visits on KSAT.com. Again, I'm looking at it right Were you looking for now. your HEB? <laughs> I was looking to see what was on here. So those are, those are visits over the past 12 months. Okay. Uh, one of the ones I was looking for was Alamo Ranch, and it's on there. It's yeah, like in the I middle bet. of the list at 86,000 visits. I actually thought these numbers would be higher yeah. for a calendar year. I, I feel like all HEVs are busy, though. All right, caught me off guard there. Six, <laughs> yeah. I was trying to do some of my homework. 611, about 74 degrees. And we have much more ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, including the chilling video from Arizona that shows the moment a man pulled out a gun in a road rage incident coming up a little later on GMSA. And extreme drought conditions in the western United States have leading to some grim discoveries that continue in the Las Vegas metro area. We'll tell you more. And taking a look outside with live cam. Enjoy that 74 degrees. The temperatures will rise this afternoon. We'll be right back. Time now is 6.15. For you at home, just be alert. Here off I-10 at Vance Jackson, it looks like we have our first crash of the morning. Uh, not sure which lanes this is uh, impacting just yet. We're going to work to find that out and give you those updates as the morning does go on. But let me take a step out of here so we can show you what we are seeing. It does appear that several lanes of close, uh, several lanes are closed right now as first responders are working to clear this up. Again, not sure which direction this is in just yet, but we'll work to bring you that information right here on GMSA. Let's go ahead and show you what the map is looking like at this hour because thankfully on I-10 we're not seeing a slowdown just yet. Just a lot of green there. Thankfully no big problems to report, but we're going to have to watch that spot closely and we want you to do the same and always plan ahead because we do have some work taking place here off State Highway 151 signal work that starts on Friday, May 13th. That's Friday the 13th, so don't forget that, but that should be wrapping over the weekend, Monday, May 16th. Keep in mind drivers that is overnight. Eight in the evening to five in the morning is when you can expect that alternating lane closures in both directions right there at loop 410. And as always, open those camera apps on your phone and scan this QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page and that should have the latest on closures that could be impacting your commute and of course anything else that could be impacting that drive time. We'll have more on the course later on this morning this crash off I-10 at Vance Jackson. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen always reminds me, scroll down for the alert. Yes, at the bottom thank you. Of the it, traffic you just page. reminded me. Yeah, scroll yes. down. It's at the bottom of the of the uh, site there. So if you're on your mobile on your phone, you'll see it there. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and check with Justin and the bus.
this morning? Bringing the buses. I feel for the kids, by the way, in the afternoon. <laughs> yes. you, you, oh, sorry. You got to lower the windows in the afternoon. It gets so hot on the bus. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Those days? Yes. Uh, 72 this morning, mostly cloudy. Southeasterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. After school, 94 degrees. Today, it'll feel warmer than that, with uh, southeasterly winds being uh, fairly gusty, 10 to 15 miles per hour. So, yes, it will be hot on those buses uh, after school today. Uh, I want to take you back to a little bit of history here. Today marks the anniversary of the deadliest tornado in Texas history. That happened in Waco on May 11th, 1953. Sadly, there were 114 deaths there in Waco as a massive F5 tornado went through downtown Waco. And uh, you see some of the damage there. It uh, killed 114, injured 597, and destroyed more than 600 homes and businesses. And I'll tell you this because... We are in the hardest severe weather season. Most of our tornadoes here in Texas come in April and May. But so far, at least here in San Antonio, our severe weather season, well, it's it's been uh, not so bad because we haven't seen much. We, we could use the rain. Of course, we never want the severe weather. But just to look back at uh, some history there for you, and as we look at the month in review, not only have we not seen any much rain, uh, it has been extremely hot. So we're projecting that we're going to be above average. Where you see the red colors here, that means we were above average, but we're also projecting to be above average all the way through next week or into next week. And we've been about 8.5 degrees above average, the hottest being 101 on May 7th and 8th. And if May were to end today, it would be the hottest May on record, just to give you some perspective. So it has been a really hot start to the month. We did get some rain out west yesterday, some storms. Uh, got going in Mexico, made their way towards Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Uh, yesterday evening, we had some storms in the Texas Panhandle as well. Those have all since fallen apart. We do have some leftover cloud cover, though, from those moving through. So it's mostly cloudy at the airport right now. 75 degrees, dew point is at 70, south southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And most of us are in the 70s this morning. It is warm, it is humid, and we'll continue to see that humidity into the afternoon which will push those heat index values up close to 100 yet again. Heat index yesterday got up to 103 here in San Antonio. Probably not as bad today, but we'll see that heat index into the upper 90s. Many places will see a heat index that feels like number close to 100 by 4 or 5 o'clock. Now, we'll tell you, dew points start to come down a little bit during the afternoons as we get later into the week and into the weekend, but it's still going to be hot. We're just trading the humidity for more uh, heat when it comes to that air temperature. Big picture here across the country, cool out west, warm across the nation's midsection, and then cool across the east coast. And for us, we continue that heat. Clouds this morning, 77 degrees by 9 o'clock. Then we get into the sun this afternoon, 88 degrees by 1 p.m. And we're talking mid-90s later today, around 4 or 5 o'clock, with a good southeasterly wind, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Extended forecast. We'll see those numbers uh, hover right there in the upper 90s into the weekend and we may see some record challenging heat Saturday, Sunday, Monday into Tuesday and those overnight lows stay right there around 70 degrees or so. Now to the drought emergency in the West from California with water levels dropping to an all time low. New restrictions are on the way and they could be a wake up call for homeowners. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has more. This morning, the surprising news from California. Despite the historic drought, the state is using more water, not less. Water usage rose 19 percent in March compared to the same period in 2020. And now unprecedented new water restrictions are being imposed, affecting 4 million people in Southern California, where beginning next month, outdoor watering will be limited to two days per week. And the California Senate is going one step further, passing a bill to limit indoor water usage. Right now, the state standard for daily indoor usage is 55 gallons per person, but under the bill passed by the Senate, that would be lower to 42 gallons in the coming years. In the meantime, Lake Mead, which supplies water to seven states, is evaporating before our eyes, with levels dropping 170 feet since the 1980s. The low water level now revealing at least two bodies, one dating back decades. The person had been shot and was stuffed in a barrel. It was kind of freaky. <laughs> we had to keep questioning ourselves if this was really real or not. The discoveries are recalling the days of organized crime in nearby Las Vegas. Oscar Goodman, a former Vegas mayor and defense attorney for members of the mob, tells the Associated Press, quote, there's no telling what we'll find in Lake Mead. It's not a bad place to dump a body. Authorities are working to identify those remains. As for the bill in California limiting indoor water use, it still needs to be approved by the state assembly. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York.
Well, we've talked about the severe hepatitis cases in kids multiple times here on KSAT. Even shared the story of a family whose child is being cared for here in San Antonio after contracting the disease. Courtney Friedman has been following the story and keeping up with the latest on the hepatitis outbreak. She'll join us today on GMSA at 9 to talk about the latest developments. The 622 will be right back. What can I do with less asthma? With Depixin, I can do more. Crazy commutes, crowd control. Have a nice day, Alex. Nice Thanks, Michelle. Michelle. Taking the stairs, that's how you do more with Depixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. I can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Depixin can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixin. In this morning's GMA First Look, celebrity chef Mario Batali has been acquitted of sexually assaulting a woman at a Boston restaurant. That story and much more coming up at 7 a.m. right here on Case at 12. Kind of our short block, 625, about 74 degrees. And much more to come right here on Good Morning San Antonio, including the desperate situation many parents are facing right now. We're talking about the baby formula shortage. We'll have the very latest. And not altogether surprising, new data showing depression and anxiety have increased over the last few years. We'll talk about what's being done to prevent youth suicide. And a quick look at the roads with TransSky looking there at I-10 at Vance Jackson. We have Stephen Cavazos tracking that incident right now and we'll check in with him soon. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Corto. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you about a recently declared state of emergency related to youth mental health. A chilling road rage incident in Arizona caught on dash cam video. A driver has pulled a gun on, has a gun pulled on him in broad daylight. We have the details. And after more than 20 years, it's the end of the line with the iPod. We're going to take a look at how Apple's little device changed the way we listen to music forever. Down to 74 now as we wait for the sun to come up over the Alamo City. Live look at San Antonio International Airport. Justin is in for Mike. And I'm trying to remember the phrase. I believe it is record challenging heat is what he calls it going into the upcoming weekend. Morning, everybody. It's midweek, Wednesday, the 11th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, another day to prepare for the heat. It'll be warm again. It will. And uh, wow, I can't believe the school year is already starting to wind down. Graduations coming oh. up, things like that over the next month or so. Where is time going? Am I, I getting rid of the iPod? That makes me feel old. I'll listen what if you were later. old before that? And it's just a reminder. It is. Yeah, it's That's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, brutal. Okay, I want to show you guys a picture on our KSAC Connect. This is really cool. So what we're looking at here is uh, the caterpillar here on top of the statue. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not really good with my Latin here, so you guys might have to help me out. It's a large green caterpillar, also known as Anthuria polyphemus. It's definitely that polyphemus. That sounds right. We're, we're all behind you, man. That's good. 100%. Go that. It is going to be a beautiful butterfly someday. Anyway, thank you uh, to Dennis for sending that in. Very, very cool picture. And as we look at the, well, not the Earth Day weather, but uh, that's not the uh, forecast we were looking for. But what I was going to show you is that <laughs> Earth Day was like I'll several take weeks 53. Ago. See, this is what happens. Uh, we're expecting temperatures to be well above average today. We're thinking 95. The average is 85. So we're talking about a 10 degree spread here between what, uh, what the average would be and what we are seeing now. It has been well above average for most of May. 71 right now in Kerrville, 72 in New Braunfels, 74 in Pleasanton. Most places here in the 70s around Bear County. So we're getting off to a very warm start, very humid too. The humidity does come down some a little bit this afternoon, but not before we see those temperatures make it into the 90s and it'll feel a little bit warmer than that. 91, 2 o'clock, partly cloudy. And by this afternoon, 95 by 5 o'clock, mostly sunny skies and some gusty winds out of the southeast, 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
Stephen, I'm sure things are starting to pick up over there. Do we have any accidents going on? Uh, unfortunately, Justin, we do. Right here, I-10 at Vance Jackson. One of the problem spots that we've been mentioning throughout the morning, uh, actually just within this hour, I should say, you can see that flashing lines out there, obviously indicating first responders are on the scene. Looks like a few lanes are blocked off at this time, but thankfully vehicles and traffic able to move on by without any major slowdown. Uh, we did find out that this is actually taking place in the eastbound lanes of I-10. So let's go ahead and get a closer look and bring you in there because we are seeing that build up. Now keep in mind drivers, if you are trying to make your way down to the downtown San Antonio area, you'll likely encounter this because again, this is in the eastbound lanes of I-10. You can see though, no delays just yet. So just always watch for those first responders. Make sure to move over or slow down. Let's check out those travel times. If you're going to be traveling into the Alamo City, thankfully no delays. This is pretty awesome for our friends up in Bull Verde, where it looks like we're in the green with 27 minutes to downtown SA. Uh, but keep in mind, 24 minute drive time, 87 from Lavernia. That's not too bad. It's actually normal. So looks like traffic is moving just fine, but we're going to have to watch this crash closely. I 10 advanced Jackson. Again, the view from trans guide. We'll see how it's impacting that commute as the morning does go on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, preventing youth suicide. Young people have been experiencing rises in depression, anxiety, and self-harm over the past decade. Jonathan Cotto joins us now with this story. And Jonathan, what can you tell us about this new information? Mark and Stephanie, new data from the CDC finds four in 10 young people report feeling persistent sadness or hopelessness. That number higher in girls and LGBTQ youth. So what's the reason behind that number? Because of the pandemic, things like social support, mentorship, community cohesion, and healthy coping strategies were interrupted. This can lead to deterioration in mental health. The U.S. Surgeon General and other groups recently declared a state of emergency related to youth mental health. Suicide is the second leading cause of death among youth 10 to 17 years of age in the United States. And get this, according to Mental Health America, Texas ranks last, 51st in the U.S. for access to mental health resources. Right now on KSAT.com, we have resources to help. Make sure to tune in to the KSAT Q&A on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Right here on KSAT, we'll have more on suicide prevention. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And now to a desperate situation impacting a lot of parents out there. We're talking about the huge infant formula shortage. It's gone from bad to worse. Sarah Costa joining us now with details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. And I have lots of friends that are, you know, every time like someone's at HEB, hey, check for this formula or Target, check for this formula. So this has become a dire situation for many families. So many store shelves are empty. It's something that has hit a lot of people hard. I have maybe a week left of formula left. And that's scary. There are times where I visit five stores in a day. Emily Clayton says she has about a week's worth of formula to feed her son. She turned to social media, even driving miles to pick up a single can. Pediatricians say they understand the frustration, but warn there are some important things to remember. Do not buy it from a non-reputable supplier. Um, we want to make sure that there's that, that we know what your baby's getting and that it's been screened through the FDA. Another important thing to keep in mind, you need to know the formula, how, how if it was properly stored or not. Also, adding to Clayton's struggle, not every store accepts WIC as payment. Now the WIC program has expanded the list of formulas you can buy through May. If you can't find the formula you need, you can call a WIC office. Meanwhile, manufacturers and retailers say they're doing what they can to put inventory on the shelves. As for the FDA, they say it has made formula its highest priority in our working around the clock right now on KSAT.com. You can read more about some of the important steps the FDA is taking. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Some other top stories we're following this morning. A 15-year-old boy is being accused in a human smuggling operation. Investigators say he was shot and is now in a hospital here in San Antonio. This happened in Kenny County on Monday. Sheriff there says a teen was driving a car with suspected migrants when deputies and DPS troopers tried to pull him over. Sheriff Brad Coe says that led to a chase. Investigators say the teen then tried to run over a deputy when he was shot. Three migrants were turned over to Border Patrol. Texas Rangers have taken over the case. In neighboring Uvalde County, deputies uncovered a human smuggling case. This one involved three carloads of people in a vehicle stolen from San Antonio. Deputies posted these pictures on social media. They say the people involved are from Cuba and Honduras. Deputies say the case happened less than 24 hours from a previous human, human smuggling investigation.
In an effort to reduce violent crime across the country, the Biden administration is now cracking down on ghost guns. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives refers to the guns as privately made firearms or PMFs. They lack serial numbers, making it hard for law enforcement to track them. National data shows from ATF that between the January of 2016 and December 2021, 45,000 reports of suspected ghost guns were recovered by law enforcement and nearly 700 were used in homicides or robberies. It's why Melissa Garcia with the ATS says they're gearing up to implement changes. We'll require markings, including a serial number, so that their firearms can be traced if recovered by law enforcement. And it also requires a background check to be completed before a partially completed firearm or firearms kits can be sold. And Lone Star handgun president Josh Felker doesn't think the rule change is the answer in reducing violent crime. He explained even a gun with a serial number can be made untraceable by filing it off. Uh, criminals all of a sudden, they can't uh, get or manufacture their own gun in the house or steal it from somebody else. There's millions and millions and millions of guns out there. The rule changes for ghost guns does not go into effect until August. In response, Senator Ted Cruz and 21 others have introduced a Congressional Review Act joint resolution of disapproval to try and block it. Take a look caught on dash cam video. Terrifying road rage incident in Arizona. A 26 year old driver had a gun pulled on him. All of it happened in broad daylight in the town of Avondale. The 26 year old says he cut off the driver of a Dodge Durango. Here he comes in about a mile down the road. The two caught up with each other. And that's when you see the driver pulling a gun on the, the 26 year old yelling and hitting at the window. When he came up to me, I usually point at the dash cam first to let him know. And when I look left, I see the barrel of the gun, you know, on my face. I did cut him off and I was totally in the wrong for doing that. I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I should not lose my life for that kind of situation. The driver who captured the video says the man with the gun eventually walked away, but it's chilling to look back at the video and see a finger on the trigger. Police in Arizona are still looking for that man with the handgun. And topping your morning consumer headlines, gas prices are hitting a new record here in San Antonio. AAA says we are now averaging $3.99 a gallon. With the summer season approaching, that number could rise as more and more people hit the road. Now, analysts say the surge is mostly due to simple supply and demand. As nations stop buying Russian oil, supplies are tightening just as spring demand is booming. Netflix may be again offering a low-cost membership at the end of the year, but it would come with commercials. That's according to a report from the New York Times it comes after the streaming service announced last month that it lost 200,000 subscribers. And one of the most profitable teams in video game history is breaking up. EA Sports is ending its partnership with World Soccer's governing body, FIFA. After one last release in the fall, EA will continue making soccer games under the brand EA Sports FC. AT&T will now use the GPS location of your mobile device to route 911 calls. The goal is to connect callers to close, closer call centers to allow faster response times. AT&T insists the feature will only be turned on when you make an emergency call. Well, get ready to say goodbye to a device that revolutionized how we all listen to our music. We're talking about the Apple iPod, and it's about to go the way of the 8-track tape player. Here's ABC's Will Gans with more. 21 years ago, Apple got its groove on the go. Introducing the iPod in 2001. iPod, a thousand songs in your pocket. The original iPod weighed six and a half ounces and had a display screen of two square inches, costing 400 bucks with a battery life of 10 whole hours. Back then, digitally downloading your favorite music was a novel concept. A new online music store from Apple Computer called iTunes. It sells single songs for 99 cents each. And with each new version of the iPod, competitors tried to keep up. Just yesterday, the Dish Network released its Pocket Dish with a screen up to seven inches holding 40 hours of video. But as of this morning, cue up the Don McLean. It's the day the music died. The tech company revealing Tuesday that its iPod Touch will only be available while supplies last, effectively ending the iPod line after more than two decades in production. 
Former Apple VP Tony Fidel credited with inventing the iPod, telling the Wall Street Journal, if we didn't do the iPod, the iPhone wouldn't have come out. It brought Steve Jobs confidence that we could do something outside of the map and that we could actually continue to innovate in new areas. In addition to revolutionizing the music industry, many credit the iPod with introducing them to Apple and, of course, giving us all those funky commercials over the years. So now that we know that they're going the way of the Walkman, is there added value to an iPod? Well, the original 2001 models are going at about 400 bucks used on eBay this morning. And if it's new, unopened in its original packaging, I saw one listed for $23,000. Wow. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. Adios, iPod. I know. I was trying to explain to my daughter the other day that you just can't, like, when I was a kid, I couldn't just pull up a song just because I wanted to hear it. Like, she's like, oh, I want to hear, you know, whatever. And so we can just press one button on the phone. And she could not grasp the concept that we could not hear it when we wanted to hear Makes it. Makes sense. She's all of uh, how many what years old now? Uh, just eight. Eight years old. Eight years old. 642, about 73 degrees. And new data shows women's participation in the labor market is at its lowest. It's been in 30 years just ahead on GMSA. We're talking about some of the biggest concerns for local moms. Welcome back at 646. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, women's participation in the labor market is the lowest it's been in 30 years. It's since the COVID pandemic, working moms, or rather, and since the uh, beginning of the pandemic, working moms are particularly vulnerable to leaving their jobs. Sarah Costa examines this alarming trend. Women have come a long way, but research shows the struggle is still real for many working moms. All of the problems that previously existed before the COVID-19 pandemic just got exacerbated. 53% are getting less than six hours of sleep a night and 23% report no time for self-care. 48% of moms surveyed said child care challenges and personal mental health concerns prompted them to leave their jobs or switch to part time. But there are ways employers can stop them from leaving. First, partners need to step up. One study found 70% of full-time working women do all or most of the caregiving. Also, better maternity pay legislation could help new moms stay in the workplace. The Family Medical Leave Act of 1993 does entitle women up to 12 weeks of unpaid job-protected maternity leave. But about 40% of U.S. workers aren't even eligible for this benefit. Moms also cite flexible schedules, remote work options, and paid time off as factors that employers could implement to make their roles easier so they can stay on track. Studies show that the challenges that working moms face are even more pronounced among low-income women and those of color. According to the Center for American Progress, if moms don't come back into the workforce, it will cost the U.S. $64.5 billion. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Sarah. Let's get a look here at I-10 at Vance Jackson. Looks like that crash we told you about has cleared. Uh, thankfully, we're seeing traffic move through there without any trouble, but be on the lookout. We are seeing reports of a new crash there off of 410 eastbound at Evers Road. Uh, but as I mentioned, that crash not too far from there off I-10 eastbound at Vance Jackson. Looks like it has cleared. Let's get a wide view of the map. Thankfully, no other issues to report just yet, but be on the lookout because there will be a groundbreaking ceremony happening today for the I-35 Northeast Expansion Project. Now, we all know that I-35 serves as a major gateway. As you can see already, people trying to make their way on the 41035 interchange. Now, TxDOT says that this new project will help to reduce some of that congestion by adding elevated lanes and HOV lanes. Now, this uh, groundbreaking ceremony will commence the first part of that project. You can see here 410 I-35 interchange, and that will stretch up over here to FM3009. That's roughly about nine miles. So you can see there on our map, now, Laura Lopez with TxDOT wants to remind drivers to be patient during the this process. This will help to reduce a lot of the congestion that we see now. People just don't like construction, unfortunately, but in order for us to help the congestion that there is today, we need to build this project now. Now, just as a reminder, again, this project will be done in phases, but will roughly span 20 miles from the North Walter Street to FM 1103. That is three counties, including Bear, Guadalupe and Gomal. Of course, we will be there at today's groundbreaking ceremony and bring you the latest at KSAT uh, later today at noon. But Justin, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty hot today. Uh, no doubt about it. Th thank you, Stephen. Good information there. And uh, I want to pass along again. If you missed it earlier, total lunar eclipse showing up Sunday night should be very good. Good, uh, very cool to see with uh, the weather cooperating here. Here's the uh, the information. So we've got sun shining 
uh, towards the earth, obviously, but it creates a shadow. Uh, it tends to create some uh, red light on the backside. And once the moon moves into position Sunday night, we're going to get the full lunar eclipse. And that's going to happen around 1030 or so. So if you want to check it out again, the weather should cooperate and should be a, a beautiful sight to see. It was also beautiful to see the rain yesterday out west. We got some good numbers in places like Del Rio, down towards Eagle Pass and Rock Springs. Uh, even over an inch, even up to two inches in some cases, but it stayed well west of San Antonio. Those were over uh, that rain was over areas that do need it. You see the uh, drought monitor here. The, the worst of the drought is now east of Del Rio, includes Uvalde and Medina counties. Uh, it's trying to stretch towards San Antonio, so we definitely could use some more rain here, but good to see that folks out west did get it uh, last night. And you see the radar. Things have quieted down significantly. We just have some leftover cloud cover. No rain to show you at this hour. Here's a look at uh, live cam, and we've got some clouds trying to build in. 75 degrees at the airport, 72 Kelly, 72 at Randolph, and a southeasterly breeze that continues to bring in all of that moisture. A lot of 70s on the map this morning, and we haven't cooled down much. Low 70s in places like Colotus, Port SA, 72 at Randolph, 74 right now at Stinson. The dew point tracker uh, for today, we're going to see pretty high dew points through the morning, and then they'll fall off some this afternoon, but not enough to uh, keep heat index out of play here. I think we're still going to see a heat index probably in the upper 90s, close to 100. So here is the forecast heat index, and by the time we get to, say, 4 or 5 o'clock, it'll feel like it's close to 100. That's where we were yesterday. That's where we'll be again today. A lot of places will hit that 100 degree mark for the feels like temperature. Here's the big picture on water vapor, and this really does tell the story. So water vapor gives us an idea of the circulations in the atmosphere, and we can see that there is still a big ridge over the middle part of the country, and uh, it's been sitting there for some time. That's why we're getting the hot temperatures. This does move a little bit, breaks down some, but it doesn't mean our forecast really gets that much better. Rain stays out of the forecast, and the heat, unfortunately, stays with us. 75 degrees by 8 o'clock. Cloudy skies, and then as we get into the afternoon, partly cloudy, 88 degrees by 1 p.m., 91 by 2 o'clock. It won't top out close to 95 by 4 or 5 o'clock. Keep in mind, though, it will feel a little bit warmer than that uh, air temperature. 96 Thursday, 96 Friday, 97 on Saturday. Small chance for storm on Saturday. And then we've got that uh, lunar eclipse Sunday night. Uh, totality 1029 to around 1154. If you want to check it out, we'll have some record challenging heat too. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. We'll be prepared. Yep. Thank you, Justin. 652, about 73 degrees. And you may have been to their family's restaurant, Mi Tierra, in downtown San Antonio. Now, two sisters from that family have a new project. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you about their new children's book. Outside with live cam, we'll wrap up Good Morning San Antonio. Check traffic yet again with Stephen Cavazos coming up. All right, 73 right now. We're going to be up around 95 this afternoon. Uh, some sun that later today. It'll be warm and humid. More heat into the weekend, into next week. Some record challenging heat potentially. Well, this show went quick today. Yes, it did. <laughs> it did. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.